Welcome to the Low Carb Conferences podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jeff Gerber. And today we have a special guest, Dr. Brett Shear, and he'll be speaking at our conference in February. Brett has been a huge supporter of our conference over the years, and we have lots of exciting news hot off the press to share with you today. So how's it going, Brett? Oh, it's great, Jeff. Thanks so much for having me. It's great, it's great to talk to you as always. Same here, Brett. So a little more, more about Brett. Brett is a board-certified preventive cardiologist and lipidologist who truly understands the benefits of proper diet and lifestyle. He still sees patients, is a lecturer, speaker, podcaster, business owner, and has served as the medical director of Diet Doctor. And now for the big news. Brett has just accepted a position as medical director of a new nonprofit organization called Metabolic Mind that funds nutrition research and education, addressing brain health and mental health. The organization was founded by the Bazuski Brain Research Fund, part of the Bazuki Group a philanthropy that invests in innovative science and technologies. They've already provided millions of dollars towards research through grants and will continue to do so with Brett now at the helm as the medical director. Brett will be stepping down from his position at Diet Doctor, but will remain on the advisory board. And I certainly hope that Brett will continue to host podcasts as he's one of the best mm -hmm. and will continue as a speaker and educator in his new position. Brett is truly multi-talented. So Brett, if you can provide some more background and tell us where you've been and where you're headed in this with this new exciting news. Yeah, well, thanks, Jeff. That's quite the introduction. And, and you're right, the timing is great because of this transition. And, you know, any transition is bittersweet. I have just really so enjoyed my time with Diet Doctor. Really, for the past four years, I started um, running the podcast before I joined as the medical director. So I've been the medical director for over three years, but doing the podcast for four years. And just such a fantastic team at Diet Doctor with just, you know, wonderful goals um, and really making an impact on the world of, of metabolic health. Uh, but, you know, as I started to get to know the bazookis and the whole bazooki group and this opportunity came up, it was, it was just too good and I had to jump on it. And um, so now I am the director, not just the medical director, but the director of Metabolic Mind uh, to really help help steer this field of metabolic psychiatry, of the intersection of metabolic health and mental health. And that's what, you know, initially when, when, I, when I started thinking about this, I'm like, I'm a cardiologist. What am I doing in this field? But that's where it's important to, to talk about sort of my evolution of my career, really, because starting as a preventive cardiologist, uh, getting certified as a lipidologist, but then really focusing on metabolic health, being... Um, a preventive cardiologist focusing on metabolic health, which really, I guess, maybe transitioned to being a metabolic health specialist. And that was my role at Diet Doctor. And that's how I see my role here as well, being a metabolic health specialist and, and really helping promoting that intersection of metabolic health and mental health. And by no means are we going to do this alone. There are so many amazing people in this field that a big part of my job is to help collaborate with them, whether it's Dr. Chris Palmer with his new book, Brain Energy, or whether it's you know Dr. Georgia Ede um, and all the work she's doing um, with her website and her training courses, or Dr. Shivani Sethi and the research she's doing, and so many others that I can't even mention. But it's it's this combination of clinical support and research where we're really going to help further this field of metabolic psychiatry. So I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I'm super excited to get started and interested to see where this goes. Well, great, Brett. Yeah. I, I mean, I started writing down some of the names of the people and we know them and there's basically uh, funding to 45 scientists in, in the realm of uh, nutrition research. It's just fantastic. And having you at the helm, and uh, also important is philanthropy. So we've been at this, you know, myself for over, you know, coming up on 25 years. And it's been a grassroots effort uh, to uh, advance nutritional science in a sense. And yeah. you can't do it without funding. And, and so over the years, uh, I guess, in a sense, we've been blessed that we've had uh, philanthropists uh, get involved. And so maybe you could tell us some more about the Bazuki family and, and, and their interest in uh, nutrition. Yeah, that, that's a great point you bring up, Jeff. You know, I've, I've said time and time again, how nutrition research is at such a different disadvantage because you can't 
really have a patent on nutrition, right? Whereas you can have a patent on a drug. So drug companies are going to just funnel billions of dollars into drug research. So it really puts lifestyle and nutrition research at a disadvantage. So you need amazing families like the Bazuki family to step forward and say, we are committed to, to helping this happen. And so one of my favorite podcasts that I did um, at Diet Doctor was with um, Matt Bazuki. So Jan and Dave Bazuki's son to hear his personal story. And I combined that with Dr. Ian Campbell and Dr. Chris Palmer to, to, to talk about this field of metabolic psychiatry. But basically, you know, as happens a lot of the times, the Bazookis had this personal experience with their son, Matt, having very difficult to treat bipolar disorder um, and just such a roller coaster of, of trying to get him proper treatment. And I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear his story, how he was you know, so manic and psychotic and, and homeless and living behind a dumpster. And just like, it really could have gone the other way and been just tragic, which we hear all the time that these types of situations go that way. But fortunately for them, they were able to get him treatment. And a big part of that treatment was connecting with Dr. Chris Palmer and starting him on a ketogenic diet. And, and to hear him tell the story that, boom, that's when it clicked. And that's when things really fell into place. And he was able to, to see that his treatment was working and he could see the progress and that believe this was going to help him. And it did. So from that, um, the Bazuki family have really dedicated uh, a, a big portion of their philanthropy towards funding uh, metabolic treatments for mental health and specifically ketogenic diets for bipolar and other serious mental illness. And they are just, they are so incredibly philanthropic and so generous with their time and their money that they are going to make a, a tremendous impact in this field, but they're not alone. Fortunately, there are other families and other groups also interested And the bazookis really are sort of creating this groundswell of not just um, the topic and not just education, but bringing other funders into the mix as well. And it's going to be so important for the future of this field. And just think of how many people we're going to be able to help by promoting this. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, that that's great, uh, Brett. And, and the Bazuki family have been successful on uh, with online gaming through uh, Roblox, if I, if I understand. And, and so right. in, in a sense now, you know, they're giving back through uh, philanthropy. And so the, the question is, Brett, um, how does these types of diets address brain health? What, what is it that uh, uh, helped Matt? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and, you know, a lot of people would think, wow, this is such brand new information that a ketogenic diet is helping people um, with mental, mental illness. But really, it goes back a century that ketogenic diets have been used for seizure disorders. And What's so interesting is a lot of the same seizure medications are used as schizophrenia, bipolar, severe depression medication. So it certainly suggests, doesn't prove, but suggests that there's a big mechanistic overlap between the diseases. And that's sort of what we're seeing. So whether it's, you know, increasing the amount of GABA in the brain and decreasing glutamate, you know, in, so decreasing neuronal excitability, decreasing inflammatory um, uh, inflammatory markers in the brain or, or neuroinflammation, um, or whether it's just providing a different sense, a different fuel source with ketones rather than glucose for the majority of the brain to work on, whether it's improving metabolic health and insulin resistance and how that doesn't just affect the body, but affects the brain. All of these are potential mechanisms for why it helps seizures and why it can help mental health disorders like, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, severe depression. And there are clear observational studies connecting the dots that those with severe mental illness have a higher likelihood of metabolic illness, and those with metabolic illness have a higher likelihood of mental health disorders. So there is that sort of two-way street showing that they're related, which certainly brings up the potential that, that therapies for one are going to help the other. And, and so that's basically where this sort of mechanistic thinking comes from, that a ketogenic diet is going to be helpful um, for mental health disorders. And look, there, there are certainly plenty of an anecdotes out there and a lot of clinical experience. And now we have the mechanistic basis for why it would be and um, pilot, pilot studies investigating this as well um, to show clinical efficacy that are starting to um, complete uh, with some still enrolling. So it's, it's certainly a very exciting time for this field. Um, and really looking forward to where it goes and how many people we can help with this. 
Yeah, and the idea of this with the with the funding from Bazuki uh, foundations that uh, we will get into human trials and instead of yeah. mechanistic and animal studies, we can move over to human trials. And as you know, it's it's difficult to do nutrition trials, but mm -hmm. you really did a great job summarizing all the mechanistic aspects. I, I particularly like the neuronal uh, excitability factor. And uh, you and I know well that uh, addressing some of these uh, conditions uh, just from a clinical perspective can can really help some of our patients. For instance, yeah. e children with ADHD and they're bouncing off the walls. And if, if you can convince them and the family to change diet to cut out sugar, it certainly helps them with focus. And also, yeah. as you alluded to, it, it started with um, seizure disorders. And we have organizations, Matthew Friends and Charlie Foundation, that right. for years have known this and they offer support to um, to people that uh, have uh, children, adults with seizure disorders, and there's clearly been benefits. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think you summed that up very well. And actually, there's even more mechanistic reason or mechanistic potential I didn't even mention coming down to the mitochondria. So Dr. Chris Palmer's, you know, brand new book, Brain Energy, um, really helps sort of lay out the story for how it uh, could be a mitochondrial function issue too, which of course ben is benefited from, from metabolic therapy and ketogenic diet. So there is a lot there. And like you said, we have to move that into human trials and human evidence. And that's exactly what we're doing with the Bazooki Group having funded five, um, five pilot studies and with the hope that we're going to take the lessons from those pilot studies and design a even even larger study, because look, we know there are going to be plenty of skeptical physicians, as there always have been and maybe always will be when it comes to nutritional interventions and specifically a ketogenic diet. Um, we have to be honest: ketogenic diet comes with some stigma that it probably doesn't deserve, but it comes with some stigma. So there's going to be some pushback. Um, and uh, plenty of psychiatrists who are going to say, I'm not going to try this on my patients until I see high level evidence that it's beneficial. So that's what we want to give them. We want to do everything we can to help get that evidence. But in the meantime, we want to do what we can to reasonably and accurately portray the potential for ketogenic diets as this type of therapy and help as many people as possible safely and effectively start people on it. And, you know, it's one of those things that does have to come with warnings. You know, just like if you have type 2 diabetes and you're taking insulin, you should not start a ketogenic diet on your own because it is potentially very dangerous. Well, same thing. If you have severe mental illness, I mean, that is a serious medical issue. Um, and to start a therapeutic ketogenic diet as treatment is not something you should be doing on your own. You should be doing that with guidance because there are plenty of precautions that come with it. So while we have a lot of enthusiasm, we also have to be cautious um, to make sure this is being done safely and appropriately. And that's where a lot of the evidence and the research is going to help us as that comes up to speed. Sure. And, you know, may, it may be that uh, it's not only just a, a targeted ketogenic diet that will help these individuals. So, you know, the diet's going to vary from person to person. Right. Um, but I do know in town, we're, we're making some inroads. So uh, our, our neurology uh, colleagues here in town, uh, they understand the benefit of ketogenic diets, although they'll discuss with the patients, you can try this crazy diet. Uh, <laughs> and I don't think it's sustainable, but in, yeah. indeed it, it may reduce the, the number of seizures, the threat, you know, the auras, and uh, they know about what we do in town. And, and so we've often gotten patients from from the neurologists or the patients come to ourselves and and we have demonstrated that uh, you know putting them on ketogenic diets will will decrease the the auras and the, and the mm -hmm. number of seizures so uh it'll be the same just working with our colleagues and uh, certainly if we have more uh studies through through this initiative um it'll be in a sense ammunition to uh to prove our point yeah, yeah, and, and you know, so such a need for for proper education, not just for like the general public to understand how this could work, but for clinicians too, because exactly like you said, this crazy diet that's extreme and so hard to stick with. Well, if that's how you sell it, okay, then maybe that's what your patient's going to believe. But at the same time, all you have to do is look at the just the thousands and thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of anecdotes, you know, of experiences of people who've been on a ketogenic diet for years, if not decades. 
and the benefits they've seen, all of a sudden it doesn't seem so crazy. All of a sudden it doesn't seem so hard to stick with. And and in my experience, the people who stick with it the best are the people who see the profound benefits. So the people who are, who are going to get off their seizure medications or their or their psychiatry medications that are really sort of coming with so many side effects and maybe blunting their emotional response and, and giving them brain fog, or the people who are able to get off their diabetes medications, or the people who are able to lose 100 pounds and get their life back and their functioning back. Like those are the people, if you ask them if a ketogenic diet is hard to stick with, they'll say, no, what was hard was living in a brain fog and living in with being 100 pounds heavier and taking insulin shots all the time. That was hard and unsustainable. This keto thing's easy by comparison, right? So those are, those are the examples we need more clinicians to see. Yeah. Well, um, as you know, Chris Palmer will be uh, speaking at our conference as well. And uh, we, we've done a podcast with him. And uh, again, you know, his experience with, with diets has ha, have been exceptional with his patients. And, yeah. you know, he, he explains that, and as you mentioned, that uh, really the treatment for mental health has been in a sense, you know, archaic or, or stone age. I hate to, to bring up the analogy, be, but analogy, but it reminds me of one flew over the cuckoo's nest with Jack <laughs> Nicholson and Nurse Ratchet, how they were using sh shock therapy and frontal lobotomies and yeah. all, all the, all the, all the patients wanted to do was to get out of there. So it's not quite that archaic, but Chris makes the point that uh, there really has been very little in the terms of advancement in uh, treatment of these conditions and the nutritional approach really gives us hope. It does. It does. And, you know, what's interesting though, is it's not necessarily a complete substitute. You know, the traditional psychiatry treatment still has a role. If you have life-threatening severe depression, if you are floridly manic um, from your bipolar disorder, if you are, are you know, actively psychotic with schizophrenia, something has to be done to temper that and, and to control that acutely. And psychiatric medications certainly can do that. The problem comes over the long run, they come with so many side effects that it's hard for a lot of these people to sort of get back to normal life because they, they affect brain function and they affect metabolic function. So people will frequently gain a lot of weight, um, develop prediabetes or type two diabetes, and just have this brain fog and decreased cognitive uh, performance and functioning. So that's where something like a ketogenic diet can help on so many levels. One, because it can counteract those side effects, but two, because of its it's uh, potential neurolog direct neurologic and brain health benefits, you can potentially lower the medications, lower the side effects without losing any of the overall treatment efficacy. So that's where I think is really the sweet spot for nutritional therapy, for ketogenic diet therapy uh, to help so many people. And, and, you know, the quotes I hear over and over again was things like lithium saved my life, but the keto diet gave me my life back or Seroquel helped save my life, but the keto diet gave me my life back. And it's this concept of, giving you your quality of life back. Um, and is, again, so it's not completely in lieu of traditional psychiatric treatments, but it's as an adjunct to, to hopefully get a better balance of the treatments and a balance of the side effects versus the overall effect. Yeah, well, look, I love the adage how uh, uh, metabolic health and mental health are really one and the same. And, you know, Brett, it's, it's kind of unfortunate, but um, in 2022, the metabol uh, the mental health business is booming and mm -hmm. you know unfortunately you know the 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 events of the last couple of years have have been just crazy and and you know it's it, it's affected us both uh mentally our, our health financially and you know it's it's our role as healthcare professionals and and through this group to to elevate people and 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 bring us back to a state where we can have a positive outlook and uh, th as a new tool to really ad address uh, mental health. Yeah, yeah, I think that's spot on. I mean, the timing really is, is uh, we're desperate for this in this time. And it, it always could have been timely and helpful, but even more so now. Yeah, I think you're spot yeah. on there. Uh, it is it is really timely. And, uh, you know, everything in terms of uh, what the Bazuki group has have done is has uh, it, it's exploded this year. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, we're glad that the, I we broke you. I know you spoke with Jan and, and that uh, they're going to offer some sponsorship and support to our event 
uh, next year. And uh, we, we hope we have the opportunity to meet the bazookis in person. Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, they're wonderful, wonderful people. Um, <laughs> like like all very active philanthropists, they are also very busy and very high in demand. So it is, uh, but they are so gracious with their time. They're so gracious with, with their money and their, and their effort. And I mean, what's great is they're not just people writing checks. You know, they don't just sit on the sidelines and write checks. They are in it. They're getting their hands dirty. I mean, you know, Dave with so much experience as a CEO and building companies um, and Jan, not just as an author, but now as a citizen scientist, she knows more about metabolic psychiatry than probably any physicians out there because she's so deep in the weeds and they're both just such brilliant individuals um, really devoting their their brain power and their enthusiasm and their energies to this movement and not just writing checks, but really help steer the ship and drive the movement, which is so important um, to have leaders like them driving the charge. It's going to make this just so much more successful and and so much more effective. Well, well hopefully as you as the director, you, you'll be the voice of the organization as well. And, and honestly, we hope that you're still involved with podcasts and education. Uh, how is this new position going to mm-hmm. look? Yeah, I mean, look, that that is my passion, educating and promoting content for people to understand um, both the science and the practical aspect. That is where my passion lies. So that will definitely be a, a big part of that. You know, I, gosh, I think back to way back when, when I started the Low Carb Cardiologist podcast, and I talked to a friend of mine uh, in the doctor's lounge who had a podcast. I'm like, how do you do this podcasting thing? What's What's it all about? And like, yeah, I'll give it a try. Who knows if it'll stick or not. And then here I am some, I don't know, six plus years later. Um, and I never thought I would have been a, I would consider myself a podcast host, but I just love it. It's um, a great medium to get information out there. And selfishly, it's just such a great way to meet amazing people and to have fantastic conversations. You know, I used to always say, I don't care if anybody's listening or not. I'm having a great time with these conversations and I'm learning so much. I'll, I'll do it for, I'll keep doing it just for me. And fortunately enough, people tune in and listen and seem to seem to get a lot out of it. So I do hope to be able to continue that. Well, we'll certainly be kicking and screaming if they put you behind a desk and push papers. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's definitely not the plan, though. The plan is for me to stay out in front and keep keep educating people as best I can and collaborating with the experts, right? Like I am I am not the end all be all that is, is going to be the voice of this mission. It's going to be a big part of my job is going to be bringing in all these other amazing experts we have in this field um, to collaborate with them so that we can share the message and each give our own expertise on how to, how to sort of steer, steer this movement forward. Yeah. Well, look, that's what you've done with uh, attending our conference over the years. I, I, I'm, I can't even recall how many times you've spoken, but we're getting you back again uh, next year before you know, I, I I even knew about all this exciting news, and so thanks for making time for us. And and I I know your your topic is ketogenic diet, and you're going to uh, be running the panel discussion on on Friday morning with the theme of our conference: Where is nutrition headed? And the goal there of the conference is to kind of stir thring, things up and offer yeah. some different. Uh, uh, perspective in terms of uh, nutrition, because the question is, uh, who has it right? Who hasn't mm-hmm. quite got it right? Where do we disagree? Where do we agree? Are there common themes? And you're the one to run the panel, so we don't get into fist fights. <laughs> I might have to bring uh, some headgear and some and some shields just in case. But no, look, first you deserve a lot of credit for even thinking up this panel and for and for wanting to sort of stir the pot a little bit. It's it's very easy to design a conference that stays within your safety net and you know preaches to the choir, so to speak. And and it's clear that you're not doing that, that you're you're taking some risks and and really wanting to add diversity to the panel and the discussion. So you you deserve a huge credit for that. And, and I'm honored to be able to lead that discussion. I think it's going to be very exciting. It's going to be um, it's going to be fiery. And but overall, I think we're going to explore some great topics. And exactly like you said, to explore where the different sides of nutrition agree, where they disagree, and why do they disagree, and how can we come to some sort of concept of how to move forward? Because What's interesting is we basically all have the same goal, you know, in in terms of the goal of helping people be healthier, helping people understand how nutrition impacts their health, 
and then trying to kind of get down to the specifics of what that means. So the overarching goals are all the same. It's just when we get down to the specifics of how to accomplish that, there tends to be disagreement. So what I hope to explore is, is one, to acknowledge that we all have the same goals and then to explore those specifics where we disagree and how to come to some, some consensus or even if we agree to disagree, to understand there's not one approach for everybody, right? And I think that's sort of where we, you could say we got into trouble in the beginning by the, you know, American, the dietary guidelines for America that basically say there's one approach for everybody. And I think we've learned that's a huge mistake. So to understand the different circumstances where one approach is maybe, you know, more advantageous than another and vice versa, rather than to say, here's the one diet for everybody. Um, so I think those are going to be some interesting topics that we explore and then, of course, with my with my talk, talking about ketogenic diets as a therapeutic intervention. And I'm excited to explore that because, you know, when you go to a doctor's office and you get a prescription, hopefully the doctor tells you about what the drug is, you know, its benefits, its potential side effects, how to use it, how often to take it, how long you're supposed to be on. You're right. It comes with all those things. But frequently when we tell somebody to start a diet, you know, we're just like, oh, you know, you should eat better. So what I want to talk about is a ketogenic diet as a therapeutic intervention. If we think about it, just like we think about giving a prescription for a medication and how that conversation looks and how it can be targeted for maximum benefit within, you know, the medical community within different patient populations. So that's what I hope to explore in my talk. So I'm excited for that as well. Oh, that that's great, uh, Brett. And then you kind of have to prepare to be the moderator for the panel discussion as well. Yeah. And you know some of the topics we we talked about it before and to our audience the the um the, the panel of uh speakers we've actually met and and proposed the idea and we want to address things such as um macronutrients looking at micronutrients looking at food quality looking at um metabolic health hormonal uh issues looking at calories timing, frequency, uh, all these issues. And, um, you know, on the panel, and by the way, the, the cast has changed a little bit. You may not uh, have known this, but we again will be having Thomas uh, DeLauer, Lane Norton, Bill Schindler. I don't even know if he, you're familiar, but we sent an email out. And uh, actually, Andreas will be on, on the panel now. Um, well, that's news yeah. to me, but of course I, I am all for that. I mean, Andreas is just such an amazing voice in this in this community and has such a great mind about nutrition and where it's headed and sort of the, the all the details about it. I think he will lend a fantastic perspective because he really does have so much of the knowledge and experience of keto and low carb, as well as high protein, higher satiety, reaching the whole population when you know, when different people can benefit from different approaches. So I think he's going to bring an amazing perspective to that panel too. So now I'm even more excited. I was already pretty excited to moderate it. Now I'm even more excited knowing Andreas is going to be there. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's great, Brett. And so, you know, hopefully um, the, the Bazooki group will uh, really expand its research behind, beyond just uh, mental health uh, with, with funding. So there's so many uh, areas that, that, uh, could benefit from nutrition research. That's true. That's true. Now, of course, you know, trying to fund all of nutrition research is just a pretty big lift. But what what certainly I think could happen is people will see the example of the impact the Bazooki Group is going to have on this one field and say, "Look, I'm a philanthropist. I I want to make an impact like that too. So let me pick my area." of nutrition research so I can have that type of impact. I mean, it just, you know, leading by example is another wonderful thing that the Bazookis family does and the Bazooki group does. Um, so hopefully that example will really, people will really take notice of that and, and understand the impact they can have by, by putting their time and their energy and their philanthropy uh, behind it. Well, one such area would be aging, mental health, uh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, and aging and um, Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I don't know if I don't know if that's an immediate area of research, but uh, it would be just, just a natural segue to go right into that. Yeah, I mean, there've been so many billions of dollars invested in Alzheimer's medications that have you know, basically amounted to almost nothing, um, which is so frustrating. 
And if you think, what if they would have spent that money on nutrition research instead, would we have, be having a very different conversation? I think the answer is yes. So hopefully somebody will step up to help make that happen. Yeah, absolutely, Brett. So uh, great. Well, um, I, I actually feel like I covered the topics that were on my mind today. And uh, I usually like to, to ask, what is it that you most enjoy about attending these uh, conferences in person? Oh, gosh, attending in person, it, it, no contest. It, it's just the camaraderie, the, the discussions, the kind of the brainstorming and just being able to be with all these great minds and these great thinkers um, who, who are so passionate about the nutrition space. And, and just to be able to talk to them, sit down and have lunch, go for a walk, you know, chat between talks. And, and that's the best part. I mean, the talks are amazing. The panels are amazing. Um, so I don't want to undersell that, but just the, the chance to, to meet with people in person and have those off the cuff discussions are, are priceless. So I, I really look forward to that. And that's something, you know, during COVID, I, I really miss, you know, the online conferences were good, but you, you know, you miss that in person, that, that most important part from my perspective. So I'm really looking forward to that. Great, Brett. And how can the audience find out more about you? What are your new, uh, uh, websites. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've got, um, metabolicmind.org. Um, that's, you know, it's up and coming. It's, uh, I, I just started last week, so don't, <laughs> so we're, we're going to build up on it and then I'm going to build out a YouTube page as well for metabolic mind. Um, and then I'm, of course, I'm always at lowcarbcardiologist.com. Um, don't really update that as much, but if anybody wants to work with me as a patient, that's where they can learn more about me. But for the for the future, it's going to be Metabolic Mind on YouTube or MetabolicMind.org. Great, great, Brett. And uh, I, we had mentioned earlier that it, it's fantastic that we have all these wonderful speakers. But honestly, the, the VIPs are you listening to this podcast today and, and those attending because uh, you're supporting our conference adds to uh, education and advancing uh, nu nutrition science. So if you want to hear more from Brett and our speakers, please consider uh, attending the conference in February. And for more information about the conference, please visit lowcarbconferences.com. So that's all for now. And thanks again, Brett, and we'll be in touch. My pleasure, Jeff. Thanks a lot.